Hey guys, Potates here. This video is about my favorite build, the Dark Build. It utilizes poison and explosions to deal crazy damage to everyone not immune to it and unleashes relentless might spending moves to those who are. If you enjoy getting up in your enemies' faces and killing them without even landing your sword on them and then causing complete chaos, then this build is for you. I'll run through what gear you need first, then take you through the skills, and finally, we'll demo the build. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. So, let's talk about the dark build. Now, the first thing you need for the dark build is this. Now, this is the darkest sword, and look how awesome it looks. Amazing. It increases poison damage by 33%. That's the main thing you need this sword for, for that increase of damage. Now, if you combine that with the darkest dagger, which increases poison damage to enemies by another 33%, you're up to 66% extra poison damage now. Also, if you're lucky, you can get quick throw applies poison damage every 20 seconds. With both of those, now you'll gain might every time your enemies take poison damage. So this just intensifies. You do poison damage, you can do more poison damage because you're getting might from it, then you can do more poison damage, and the process continues. Now, we have a further 33%. So that's meant to add up. 33 plus 33 plus 33 is meant to add up to 100% extra poison damage. So this is 33.3%. It's just not saying that. They don't want to get into decimals. So now with the bow, we have 100% extra poison damage. And as you guys saw with all of the footage before, that does a lot of damage. Also, 50% chance headshots poison. So you want to be getting those headshots off and you want to be throwing your dagger because that will spread poison by itself. Now with the three pieces, um, we move on over to a chest piece, which you can kind of, you can do what you like here. But the main reason why I have the machine tribe chest piece is because defeated enemies have a 25% chance of exploding. Now, you guys saw that as well. If you combine that with the four piece bonus from the dark set, which we'll get to in a second, you'll have a lot of exploding things happening. So you'll have guys exploding with fire damage. They're already poisoned. And then that activates the bale fire. So there'll be a lot of bale fire happening because you'll be killing a lot of things. A lot of grunts will be dying and a lot of grunts will be exploding as well and exploding as well. So there'll be a lot of bale fire because of this build. Also, um, critical hit can also apply cursed. So just so you guys know, the more variety you have in your damage types, the better. So with this dark set, you're focused really primarily around poison, but... Uh, they might be dazed or might be fearful of, of curse. So you have a way to apply a curse, which will break their poison resistance if they have one, their poison immunity if they have one, then you can start applying the poison. So we have a way of doing fire and we have a way of doing cursed. Then we go back to the cloak here, which is increases the poison damage by a further 33%. So we have 133% extra poison damage right now. Okay, we don't, this is probably not the best one to have. This could be replaced, but I just haven't found a better cloak. And then we have um, whatever whatever ring you need for this. Um, it's probably better having the dark ring, honestly, but I haven't gotten one yet. I don't think. Yeah, I don't have it yet. So it'd be good to have the dark ring. You do a further 33% poison damage. So that's all you need for the dark set is, is the machine chest piece and the uh, the four set of the dark tribe probably best to have the first few weapons as dark okay then let's talk about let's talk about skills now with this set a lot of things will be exploding so you want to upgrade execution the grim resolve because if you take damage you don't want to be losing might you want to be gaining it so usually if you go secret might for example or if you go fatal might when you take damage it takes down your might but now instead of taking it down it'll give you might 
that is of course excluded from Ologs. Ologs, when they hit you, <laughs> you seem to lose might regardless of having this ability. Alright. Now, perfect counter. Not really that important. Thanks, Karudas, for the sub. Uh, but I do gain might from each counter, or I do um, fatal counter for this build. Now, fatal counter is because when you kill enemies, they have a chance of exploding. And that will spread your, uh, your poison effects and your fire effects, which spreads the bale fire. Now, your health is going to get slightly lower because things are going to be exploding. So having an increased chance of critical strike when your health is low is what you want to go for. So reprisal is probably the best upgrade for this. You want a way to get back your health. So I like having ground drain. Let's you drain while they're on the ground. Though you can use Fury, more of a chance of critical striking, more of a chance of spreading the curse, um, or you could use Ratio. It doesn't really matter, but I prefer Ground Drain. Now, Brutal Aggression gets Ceaseless Might. This is a no-brainer. Um, Ceaseless Might means you can get off two of your Venoms, or one of your Venoms, one of your Poison Blasts, but it doesn't fully deplete your bar when you use any might spending move so that's what you want now with retaliation depending on how much you die you might want to get adamant gain an additional last chance or like i have vengeful drain so you can get up drain your attacker get some health back turn a minion to your side it's a lot of shenanigans there now elven agility i just get silent runner so i can just avoid having to fight everyone uh you can get spectral dash Helps you when you're in stealth, get up close, but I prefer Silent Runner. Now, Brutalize, I prefer having a hit streak slightly higher. I also prefer having your might built slightly faster. I don't want enemies to flee. I don't feel like that's needed. I prefer them around so I can start generating might off them by poisoning them. Uh, then we have Poison Tendril. I use Proximity Trigger, but you could use Bursting Toxin so you can start... Um, spreading that chaos. I liked it before <laughs> Monolith changed it. It used to be um, all of your poison damage would make them explode. But now it's just when they drink from the barrel. So this could be a way to start the fight. Get a few of them exploding, spreading the poison. So it's all down to uh, either Bursting Toxin or Proximity Trigger, depending on how you want to play. Now, Wraith Chain. I use uh, Shadow Blade so I can do more of these more often, so you can get five or six of them instead of just four. Uh, I've never really needed to use Monster Hunter, so I would recommend Shadow Blade over that. Now, Deadly Spectre. I rarely use this, but Spirit Jane is the way to go as well. You don't really need to brutalize. Fear is an effect that's only good when you have gear for it. I believe. Because grunts are never really a problem. I've never had a problem with grunts. And you guys probably don't have a problem with grunts either. They're, what The way I see grunts is, a grunt is a battery. It's there for you to recharge. It's there for you to get health back. It's there for you to get might. And wraith if you want to kill them. So, do not make your batteries run off. Okay, death threat. I just switch between these two here. So, vow of violence if you want more gear from death threading. Uh, or better gear from death threading, sorry. Oh, not better gear. Uh, better Mirian game. You get a higher reward for, for completing the uh, death threat, sorry. Um, and worse than death is great if you want to uh, lower the level by quite a lot. Now, detonate. Bursting arrow is what I use so I can do it from range. Though, spider song is just as good. Remember, you, just, you want to spread that poison. You want to spread that uh, fire. There's the bale fire effect. Freeze pin, I use savage ice. Now, the reason I use Savage Ice is because there are a lot of Olog captains that I want to be able to pin down, and this will allow me to do so. You can make them flee in terror. I don't see the point of it, honestly. The only reason you'd want to do this is if some of them had that uh, poison effect and you want it to spread, um, but because all of them might be exploding now because of the change to Bursting Toxin, just get uh, Savage Ice. Deep Freeze is also good if you're not facing an Olog, you can hot swap between those two. Now, Bird of Prey, get Talon Strike, it's amazing. 
It lets you fast travel around the place, get into fights quicker. Eagle Sight is great, but you don't want to be doing too many Legolas shenanigans. Um, the amount of focus you get in the air is, is more than adequate. Now, Marty Shot, Venom, and Firestorm have them both because when they are already poisoned, swap to Firestorm and then you can start the Bale Fire yourself. So, this is a way of instigating the effect. Now, Shadow Strike. Shadow Dominate is good for when you're not facing a tough Uruk. Toby, thanks for that. But when you're facing a tough Uruk, get Shadow Strike Pull. Now, I've showed it before when, I, when I've done Fortress Sieges that Shadow Strike Pull is an amazing ability. You can pull anyone that's not range immune to high ground and just focus them by yourself. So it's an amazing ability. Definitely pick it up. Thanks, Toby. Now, Wraith. You want Brace of Daggers, you want either Rain of Blades or Swift Barrage. Now, Swift Barrage is okay if you're focusing down a single target, but I personally prefer the shotgun effect of Rain of Blades. As you can see in the little video at the top there, top middle, um, it spreads five daggers out, and because we have that dark set that uh, spreads the poison, this will spread poison to at least one Uruk, or up to five, depending on how many daggers hit. Then we have Alvin Light. You, of course, need Poison Blast. This is the bread and butter of your of your build. This is what instigates the poison more often than not. This is what you want to spend your might on. And as you, if you saw uh, when we were testing or showing the build off, you can see that this is pretty much all you need to start killing a captain. You don't even need to get in there and use executions once the captain's hit by this. Because they will take up to half of their HP just with this. So, Ice Storm. Frostbite. Frostbite means you're guaranteed to get off that crit. That crit will give uh, that cursed effect. Shattering Blow is okay if you want to make them flee. But once again, we don't really need that for this build. Shower of Ice is good if you want to freeze a lot of, a lot of Uruk. However, I prefer Frostbite. Now, Treasure Hunter, you want Mindbreaker for your Domination Speed or you want Prospector for gems if you don't have the best quality gems. Uh, Raise the Dead. I keep it on Undying Loyalty, but if there's um, if there's beasts around you or olives around you that you want to resurrect, then go for it. Though with this build, we don't really use Raise the Dead, so ignore that for now. Just do this based on personal choice. Now, Karagor Rider. I use Beastal Rage, it means you can roar until your Karagor dies and summon in two or three Karagors to help you out from the single Karagor that you have without needing to gain might. So that's the best ability I think. Graug Rider, basic attacks gain more might. The reason we don't get Devouring Force is because if they gain more might we get to use his execution more often, therefore get more health anyway, so it's better to deal more damage and gain more health rather than just gain more health, if that makes sense guys. There we go. All right, call mount. I'm using Dragon Song. Switch between Growl Call and Dragon Song based on who you're versing. Sometimes Dark Caragor can be good as well. Then we have Shadow Mount. Now I use Caragor Breaker just so I don't have to break them before I dominate them. If you have a large group of Caragor in the area that aren't already broken, swapping to this could be good. But I think I've used this maybe twice ever. So I think it's better just to get Caragor Breaker. Now, Dragon Rider, your Drake sucks in terms of its HP. It's The HP on the Drake is just terrible. So you want Scales of Iron, it'll help it not be as, as, as bad. And this also applies when you're not riding the Drake, whereas this only applies while you're riding it. And you don't want to sacrifice your Drake's health because your Drake doesn't take too much damage to begin with. Anyway, move over to Drain. Domination is the best. Though you can swap in and out depending on how you want to go. Uh, if you want more arrows, then get Quiver of Souls. But I keep it on Domination because swinging the tides in your favor is generally better. Okay, Spectral Glaive. Get Daily Striker, it's the best. This is, we've, we've, we've got enough might gain with our um, poison damage. So if you ever want to use the Glaive, you want to use it multiple times like this. How it's doing in the, in the video description there. So, Ring Wraith, put him on poison. 
pretty straightforward. You need poison, more poison damage the better. They will do more damage with their poison weapons, just as you will. Shadow Strider, you want to get Hammer of Aragon. Now the reason is because when they're frozen, you can do your Ice Storm. And then you can get the crit. There is... I don't think there's another ability that's as good as this. Especially when you're facing a very powerful Uruk. The ability to freeze them and hit them from the back is invaluable. Especially when they're a defender or a savage. Um, I've won fights against a lot of very difficult Uruk just by using this ability. Well, the main reason is this ability. So, pick that one up. Call Followers, Bodyguard. Now, you want a Bodyguard with the ability to uh, increase your poison damage. Now, I'll show you that in a second. But that's generally the way to go. If you don't have one of those and you've gotten uh, all the Shelob memories, then use Cluster of Spiders. You can send these out individually to attack their targets and poison them. So it's really depending on what you have there. If you have a good Bodyguard, use that. If you don't, use Cluster of Spiders. Dominate Captain, Enrage Followers. Now, you can heal your followers if you want as well. That's an option, or you can destroy them, but don't ever pick this up. I don't think there's ever going to be a case where destroying your own guys just to make a few run away is going to be worth it. Now, let's have a look at what captains you could use. Okay, so if you have one of those training orders and you have this dark build, then use it. So now he has Epic Trait Poison Master. Now you bring this guy out with your poison build and you will start doing more poison damage as well. And of course he has poison weapon. The best follower you can get is probably for this build, probably a destroyer with poison bombs and the poison master trait. The main thing was uh his Ologs should get flame weapon, and there we go, see? Those mighty Ologs get, get those flaming weapons. So that's what, that's what mighty Ologs do, guys, and mighty, or mighty anything, really, will give you the, the old ability share. So those should be dead now. They won't stand up to the uh, to the onslaught. Poison bombs. Fail fire explosions going off everywhere. This is the build for uh, for me. Lots of lots of booms. Kaz is almost dead. I haven't had to hit him once. your back into it. <laughs> and there we go. Broken. Didn't even need to touch him. Thanks for watching guys. I appreciate all your support. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe if you haven't. I'm still giving away copies of Shadow of War as well, so check the link in the description for more information or join the Discord chat to talk to me directly. I'm Potates and I'll see you soon.